Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to show you my whole coat collection including a haul that we're going to start with of my new coat for the season. So I bought a couple of coats actually in the Nordstrom anniversary sale and so you've already seen those but I want to give you a bit of a quick review about those and then I have this coat that I just bought to add to that and it's a coat that I've actually been wanting my whole life pretty much. I have always wanted a shearling coat and I finally found one that I felt would really work for my life because most of the ones that I've seen on the market are beautiful but they tend to be a little bit more casual so I found this one that is actually a mid-length coat if I hold it up you can see the bottom and it's black as well which I think helps it to be even more versatile and there's a twist to it as well it's reversible so this coat is made by a designer that i actually had never heard of it's a canadian designer called hiso h-i-s-o um, where all the letters are capitalized except for the i it's actually from 1975 so it's over 40 years old the company was actually founded in 1975 but like i said i never heard of it i think it is a little bit more of a boutique smaller designer brand what I love though about their designs is just how thoughtful it is. So I, like I said, I love that it's mid-length, I love that it's a bit of a darker color, um, and just all of the classic lines of it. It's actually, I'm not going to say it's very fitted because it doesn't cinch in or anything like that, but it just fits me perfectly. Like a glove, you know, when you just put it on over anything, even layers, and it just fits you so well, but it's still really comfortable with room to move around in. So I love that and then I just love that it's reversible. So you can actually wear it with the black suede facing out or with the shearling inner layer um, facing out and everything reverses. So including the cuff and then even the pockets of course you can turn out so that they are on the other side. So I thought that was really neat. Newest edition and I will link it down below. They are sold at a few department stores and I'm not sure this exact style is available anymore but they call themselves the Shearling Experts so they have a few options in um, the Shearling style and I just really like how classic all of the lines are for their designs. I definitely have gotten quite a few throughout the years that I really love but you'll see that something they all have in common pretty much is that they're all pretty neutral and very classic lines and I think that's really important. I'd rather pay a bit more for a coat and get years of wear out of it and just pick really classic lines, nothing too trendy. The one classic style that I really recommend is a traditional military style coat. And all that refers to usually is a bit of a thicker fabric as well as really classic gold or metallic buttons, often double-breasted like this coat is. And this is from Macage, um, which is a Montreal Canadian brand, much like a celebrity favorite over the last couple of years. And I actually picked this one up in the anniversary sale, not of this year, but of the previous year. And I've gotten so much wear out of it. It is a little bit of a cat fur magnet, but it's worth the work of linting it because it really does fit me so well. And something also that I want to point out about it that again is kind of in common with a lot of the coats that I choose is that it's a warm fabric, a high quality fabric. This is wool, but it's light. I really like an unlined coat or coat that is lightly lined, so that has like a thin satin lining or something like that. Um, because what happens then is that you don't add too much bulk, you have warmth through whatever fabric it's made from, but you don't have like a thick kind of layer that's going to add a lot of bulk to your frame so that you can layer yourself um, with a cardigan and scarves and gloves or whatever accessories are your preference and it gives you a lot more different ways that you can style it and a lot more different climate variations that you can wear it for as well. Next segment is my collection of trench coats. So I have three and my first and most favorite I think still to this day is my Burberry Kensington. Now nowadays the Kensington has very much been replaced by the Sandringham which is a little bit more of a fitted style. The Kensington is more of a classic like straight up and down trench that you belt in so that it's more fitted around the waist um, but they're pretty similar ultimately in that they both have all of the classic details of a Burberry coat including the epaulettes, the cuffs at the sleeves, the classic belt, leather buckle, and just this magic gabardine fabric that was of course first invented 
for the war to be super durable and just be like a fabric that was would survive everything and so it's still made that way and I do have to agree that there is something special about it just in terms of how well it repels water and also in terms of just how hard it wears. So if I get a stain on this coat, which has happened more times than I care to admit, because da -da -da -da, this coat is actually decade old, older really actually. I think I was 17, maybe 18 when I bought this and I'm on the cusp of 30 now. So it's definitely, you know, quite an old coat and I'm starting to really get into the mindset of probably um, replacing it or getting um, the San Sandringham, which is a bit of a different fit, but for the West Coast, Coast climate, I can wear it, I would say, most of the fall and winter, and definitely in the spring, it's perfect. And then I got a Burberry Brit coat from the outlet in um, Palm Springs, I think, and it's a really nice lightweight coat because it's actually got um, ventilation under the sleeve here, which is really smart because these kind of impermeable um, style coats tend to be a little bit sweaty when you wear them. So it's got really good detailing that way. It's also got a really great big hood um, as well to it. Similar fit. It's a great trench for travel. The one thing I don't like about it is that the buttons are really heavy metal, which adds some weight to the coat, and they kind of cling against each other when you walk a little bit. So that's a detail that I wish was not the case with this coat, but the navy is a great color, so I'm really happy with the choice overall. And then my third trench coat is by Aquascada, which I think has gone bankrupt now. It used to be Burberry's main competitor for trench coats, and this one is a short style, so I kind of got it to have something a bit different from my Kensington. It's also a lighter color, so it's more of like a light putty gray. Um, and Aquascada definitely has a quality as well. Um, in terms of the gabardine fabric that's used. A lot of people say it's actually older than Burberry in terms of its history as a brand. Definitely has a rich British history either way. And um, I would say I like it about 80% as much as my Burberry one. Next up, I've got three classic pea coats, but with a twist. So none of these actually fit a traditional pea coat profile, but they have a lot of the features that pea coats do have, like big buttons, a wool fabric, um, tend to be like medium light, really great coats for fall and spring. Um, and this one is by Soya and Kyo. I'm not sure how you pronounce this name, but it's definitely a bit of a newcomer that I'm seeing more and more around Nordstrom. And they have some really great trendy options that are nice twists on classics. So this one has leather sleeves and a wool body that is a bit kind of oversized. It's got that slightly menswear inspired look and straight down kind of feel. And I've actually gotten a ton of wear out of this coat because it satisfies that craving for leather jackets um, while still being really wearable in an office setting. And then next after that, this is one of my purchases from the Nordstrom anniversary sale this year. And it's another reversible coat and it's from Rag and & Bone. And it's a cashmere wool, it's really luxurious. It's got a bit more of like a cropped, boxy kind of fit to it. Um, so it's really nice paired with really fem feminine pieces. And you can see it's got the collar, so if you wear it with the camel side in, you still get a bit of that camel and vice versa with the gray. And it's belted. I do have a thing for belted coats. You will notice that pattern in this video. And I've got a real oldie here. This is my Brooks Brothers coat. This is the coat that, along with my Burberry trench, I wore pretty much straight for um, the first few years that I worked. Those were my only two coats that I wore, I think. So um, it's really quite long, so it's nice with a longer dress or something like that and it's actually got a little coffee stain here that I need to get dry cleaned um, but Brooks Brothers is a nice option for really classic lines you know this is just that really classic wool coat there's nothing groundbreaking about it but that's kind of what's nice about it as well. Resist the unusual color of it so it is an icy bright baby blue um, which definitely was a little bit more out of my comfort zone but the lines of it are so classic it's just a classic belted coat, it's quite fitted, so it's a little bit more on the dressy side. And I think I'll get the most wear out of this in the spring just because of the lining and the overall kind of just spring-like, really crisp feel of it. So I wear size one in Ted Baker, and I do really like the detailing of Ted Baker coats, so they've got the rose gold little metal details to them, which I think are really pretty, so. 
my oldest pieces as well. Not quite as old as my Burberry coat, but a bit more worn is this DVF. And even the tag is actually almost a little bit, I don't know, corroded from the rain or something. But I still love it so much. Someday I will replace it with another coat in the same color family. You guys know I love my burgundy. And this coat is a true cranberry. And so every time around the holidays when it's kind of colder, because this coat is more lined, it's a bit thicker than any of the others that I've shown you. It's another belted style, a bit on the longer side as well from DVF. And I'll try and find some similar options because for sure they don't make this exact one anymore. Like I said, it's six years old. Um, but I just love the cranberry color of the coat. And if you've never had like a kind of burgundy or dark red coat, it is well worth the money actually if you like feeling festive because every single year I just get so many compliments on it and it's just really quite eye-catching and Mrs. Claus like in a subtle kind of way so yeah I love this coat and I'm gonna keep wearing it until it really is on its last legs it's it's really not that bad it's got a little bit of wear going on with the wool and like I said the tag is just a mess in terms of the metal I don't know what happened to it but overall I'd say it has another good couple of years left in it which means I'll probably have gotten close to 10 years out of it then we're gonna wrap up this video with just an update on my centaur coats but I do have a whole video on these so if you want to hear more information about centaur course like the rest of the world I discovered it when the Duchess of Cambridge wore her gold gray one um, to Canada on the Canada tour and um, absolutely fell in love with it at first sight um, and it really has been worth the splurge for me to get some coats from this brand they're made of alpaca which is something to look into from for any brand because alpaca doesn't pill much and it's really great for outerwear. So it's not as soft as cashmere is um, in terms of sweaters, but it's really hard wearing for a coat. And I think it's a good choice for that reason, especially around rain, it seems to deal with that really well. Um, so this one is lined. This is their hooded mid-length style in um, whatever they call camel. I think they call it beige. It's got a bit of ribbing here on the cuffs, but otherwise is really classic lines. I would say it's a borderline faux Max Mara coat. I sometimes have moments where I wished I had just waited and gotten a Max Mara coat instead. But what you get out of this one is this really nice hood that is almost like a collar when you wear it down and I really like that style it makes it a bit more convertible and really great for the west coast so overall I have no regrets um, and it's worn really really well out of my centaur pieces my favorite one is actually still the first one that I got this black one because it is just so versatile in the black with the rib sleeves um, I absolutely love this and every single year I've had it for three years now I think um, I just pull it out again and again and get so much wear out of it. I get a little bit less wear out of the gray one, but I still love having a lighter colored option. And this tends to be one of my most worn coats for the spring as soon as it starts to warm up because with light layers underneath, it's just a really nice crisp piece to wear. So yeah, that is my coat collection. I hope you found this video useful. I really enjoyed just kind of sharing all of my thoughts with you as well as a little mini haul. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video on style. Bye!